Hello, everybody, and welcome to Manganese X Energy Corporation's channel. Just want to let you guys know what we're going to be doing here. We're going to be going through company updates. We're going to be discussing industry updates, answering any questions you guys got. So if you have any while you're watching this, don't be afraid to send them over. And of course, we're going to be introducing members of the team. So kicking us off today is none other than Chief Executive Officer and Director Martin Ketman. Martin, how are you doing today? Very well, Michael. Nice to meet you. And it's just a pleasure to be able to come here and tell Manganese X's story because we feel we have a very compelling story and we really progressed this company since 2016 and very excited to get rolling. Wonderful. I'm very glad to hear that, Martin. How I'd really like to start this out though is let's paint a picture of yourself and your background and what you're really bringing to the team. So kick us off by telling us about your past experiences and what really gives you the spark that gets you interested in this stuff. Okay, I'm going to hit you with my best punch right off the bat. I'm known as this disruptive entrepreneur. I've been a consultant since 1982. And my philosophies in life has been, and I've consulted for more than 150 companies in my lifetime, soft goods to software, to mining, to everything, every, a lot of different industries. And I always like to take a different approach mm -hmm. because by taking the most conservative approach into these companies that I was consulting, they needed upgrading and improvement and they couldn't do it the regular way. So I would try to always look at a different aspect, of course, to improve them economically and become more viable. And of course, being able to market their products and to improve, improve their bottom line. And that's how I always started. I was very successful in that, not always 100%, but by working as a team, and, and mixing ideas, we were able to always improve the situation greatly. So that's why they call me disruptive entrepreneur. And I took that philosophy into manganese. And it's a long story. When I started at 2016, I had some mining experience, general mining experience, but I'm not a geologist. I've been, a, I'm an engineer in my background. Mm -hmm. I did a lot of R and D. And I took this company at, in, in 2016, having this vision about manganese, mm -hmm. because nobody really knew much about manganese. And we have this beautiful property in uh, Woodstock, New Brunswick. It's uh, 1,200 hectares and 54 claims. It's a gigantic property, mm -hmm. really well situated. And... Uh, with all the amenities there. And I said, we've got to do something about this to become the first North American mining company to commercialize manganese. And I just want to say one more thing, but it wasn't just manganese. It was like for the EV and backup storage batteries, because that's where we saw our vision. Our mm -hmm. vision in 2016 was to really manufacture a high product, a high end product. Uh, really, it's, it's really called a precursor to the cathode, pure, high purity with very low contaminants, EV compliance. So that's where the start was. <laughs> All right. So you had the entrepreneurial spark and you've been involved in a lot of companies. So you're really right in your wheelhouse now here at Manganese. So just let's break it down as simple as possible for people. Tell us what the mineral manganese really is and how it plays into this. Well, it's very interesting. There's two types of manganese minerals. There's a carbonate, which is like a charcoal, and then there's the oxide. There aren't that many carbonate deposits in the world, and uh, the mineralogy is lower than the oxides. The oxides are a very high percentage mineralogy, and the carbonates are lower. And the challenge was, there's not that many companies in the world really producing end products with the carb manganese carbonate. So the key was, how do we produce a good end product that's viable uh, as a carbonate. So the, um, I'll just say the, uh, the oxide, what, what basically I'll just give you a little lesson on how it works. And I didn't know this when I came in. The oxides are basically roasted. What they do is the high grade oxides, what they do is they're roasted for eight hours at high temperatures and, and then turned in to uh, an oxide. And uh, our carbonate is leached. It's with sulfuric acid. So what we do is, and there's like 50 minerals in our carbonate. So we have to leach it and separate all these minerals and to make it simple, just to refine it into an end product. The thing is with the uh, oxides, 
there's two negatives about it. It's first of all, it takes, it uses a lot of energy. It takes eight, nine hours to really oxidize it. And it go, you have to have temperatures to 900 degrees. So it's high energy related. Secondly, like the transportation, a lot of the uh, manganese oxides are in, ch in China and in Africa. So it's, it, takes a, it takes a lot of time to transport and a lot of costings. So that's why we want to use our carbonate, mm -hmm. which is, in my opinion, only my opinion, it works better in, in a uh, precursor in the cathode. Okay. Because of the fact that it's stronger, a, a, a charcoal carbonate is stronger than an oxide. So I just want to explain a couple other things and what, what is a carbonate and what is, it's called manganese sulfide MnSO4. And that's called a precursor to the cathode. In other words, you mix the manganese with other products into the cathode. But the whole idea about that is the fact that the, ca the, the purification method has to be really pure. There can't be any impurities and that's taken us a long time to develop to bring it down to EV compliant impurities. Because if for some reason, it, there's problems with the impurities, it's going to decay the cathode. So okay. it's a very, very fine process. And I have to say that we've achieved 99.95% purity, wow. which is a rarity for North American production. And we've achieved it. It took us with the uh, assistance of a great, uh, research company, an engineering company called Kometco out of Vancouver to achieve this. And it was many, many hours and years of sweat equity involved. Yeah. All right. It sounds like you guys were pretty much on the money though, back in 2016, when you had this vision, you're really seeing the EV market really start to pick up. You're seeing everybody get on board. And I imagine then the demand is just going to continue increasing as well. So it seems like your guys' vision is, is on point so far. What would you say the biggest, the biggest things aside from improving what you just said, talking about the purity and so on, the biggest things people should be looking forward to from this point on looking forward. Well, looking forward. Okay. The most important thing is we, as I repeat to myself again, we want to become the first North American mining company to commercialize manganese. And that's all we've been working for. And I've got a great team that's working with us, with me. I just have to say one thing. The team and our directors are just fantastic. We, can, I cannot, it's impossible to do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we are now scoping and forwarding ourselves to something called the PEA, Preliminary Economic Assessment, mm -hmm. which will determine our commercialization and economic viability of our end product. And believe it or not, most of the, the PEA comes from the metallurgical end of it. You know, it's interesting. I know I knew a lot of mining companies that really had high, whether it was in different industries, gold and silver and all this, and they, uh, they were able to really strike good veins and high percentages of their of their ore. However, they could not refine it and bring it down to the end product that was economically viable. Mm -hmm. And we're very, very excited to say uh, that we are very optimistic from early indications for our PEA and, and we, in our last uh, news release, we've made some major, major discoveries of reducing something called reagents, which is one of the key components in, in the costing. So it, it looks like it appears that we reduced our costings enormously to make it more economical and uh, that which will go into something called the flow sheet. And that okay. the flow sheet is one of the most important things going into the PEA from the metallurgical point of view. Well, Martin, it sounds like you guys have been firing on all cylinders for a while, really getting stuff going, which is great. Can we shift gears just a little bit and tell me more specifically what your role looks like on the day-to-day -day working for me? <laughs> I'm laughing. I just want to say it's very interesting. We've been, I have a team. I have a team of, uh, of our, our chairman, Roger Don, our vice president of exploration, Perry McKinnon, Louisa Moreno, Jay Richardson, who's, um, who's our, our CFO, and Roger Tanja, who's our director. And we, believe it or not, like we work 12, 14 hours a day because it's a dedication and it's a very ongoing process. We have a lot of different, we get a lot of calls and emails from investors. I just wanna say one thing that, that we have a website 
www.manganeseenergycorp.com. And my telephone number is on that website. Mm -hmm. And anybody can call me directly and ask me any questions. We respond to all emails, good or bad, or calls. And we want to have a transparent company where the investors believe that we are doing the best we can and the most being the most transparent. And that's what I've been doing. So the we work seven days a week, even though my wife doesn't really like that and says we're supposed to relax on weekends, but you know, doing news releases and uh, and we have we're traded in uh, in three different uh, in three different areas. We're traded on the venture. We're traded on over the counter QB, and we're traded on three or four exchanges in Europe. So we're constantly being traded, and we have a very very large following, extreme large following, and a lot of input from investors, good and bad. And we just like to keep the keep the communications going. Also, I like to hear from investors a lot about what's going on, what they think about us and where we're going. All right. Yeah. It sounds like, I mean, you play an integral role talking to people, figuring out people's issues or what it is they like and getting information going back and forth. It's great. You guys keep that information open because that's a very good sign of a very healthy company, right? Now, I just want to mention one thing. Sorry. Uh, we just engaged a company called Wood Canada to mm -hmm. do our PEA. <clears throat> so, Basically, they're one of the foremost consultants and engineering companies in the world. They're, they're, they're rated one of the top five consulting companies in the world. So what I have to do, which is a lot of fun, I have to coordinate the PEA because we have a schedule we have to follow. We have to coordinate the uh, metallurgical and also the exploration into a package where we're going to achieve our goals. Uh, at a, at a you know at a, on a timely basis also make it very as economical as possible so uh, so we'll be able to get a very positive PEA and we're very very encouraged by the preliminary results already all right well martin listen let's say you did a really good job given the overview of your background giving a good overview of the company what i'm going to ask you to wrap this up with is give me the elevator pitch if you had just say you had you had one minute with me and you wanted to let somebody know the core of what it is Manganese X Energy Corp does, give me the pitch. Okay, we are a, uh, a manganese company located in Woodstock, New Brunswick. We want to become the first North American mining company to produce manganese, high-grade manganese for the EV backup storage industry. We're progressing very well. We've already done our 43101. We're looking forward to completing our PEA, which will be positive and be able to show North America that we're going to produce manganese high grade and be able to supply the North American market. That's basically it. It's really interesting to see the multiple verticals you guys got here, but we can do deeper dives on another video. I think we did a good job of, of giving a really solid overview of yourself and the company now. So I want to say to everybody, thank you so much for watching so far. And again, as we had said multiple times now, if you have any questions at all, don't be afraid to send them to us and we'll happily dive into them for you. But for now, everybody stay tuned. We'll get you some more news over the wire as soon as we can. Martin, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Michael.